Long ago, Burnaby used to be the place where the city was criticized for tearing down low-rise buildings like this one and putting up high-rises and leaving renters with no place to go and nothing they could afford. Now, Councillor, what's your big idea? Well, we're actually standing in front of the uh, first building where tenants got to return to new units at their old rents. So when you look around, you'll see the the low-rise apartments that they used to live in. Yeah. And before that, they when they were displaced, nowhere to go. And many people forced out of Burnaby and, uh, and of this community. But we brought in policy that protected tenants. And so this, this location right here, actually, uh, 32 of the 49... Uh, tenants returned here. Now, not everybody is so lucky. Jess, what's your situation? Uh, so I live on Dow, and my building is one of the ones that are slated for uh, demo eviction. So the uh, tenant assistance policy comes into effect for the people who are residing there at the time of the uh, application for rezoning. And I moved in three months after that. So even though you've been there for five years, doesn't apply to you? Yeah. Because that's where the cutoff is. I've been keeping an eye on the rental market. I have two cats uh, and I've got some accessibility uh, needs that are a little bit more difficult to accommodate on a budget. So everything that I'm looking at that um, can accommodate me and the cats, I'm looking at for one bedroom, like $25, $3,500 in that range, anywhere pretty much in the lower mainland. And counselor, for somebody like Jess, mm -hmm. what are the options then? Yeah, and that's, that's the problem we're in right now. And, and we've seen that the, uh, the market is not going to fix it for, for people like Jess. And that's why, you know, we need more uh, non-market housing and all levels of government that come, come to the table. And that's, again, why we're committed to that in, in Burnaby. But overnight, it's not going to resolve the, the issue of people like that, that Jess are, are in. Mm -hmm. There's 19,000 uh, rental units in some type of process of either there's tenants in them right now, they're under construction, or rezoning or through readings. Out of those 19,000, about half are non-market units. And currently under construction, we have about 1,000 non-market units. Any new building has to have 20% inclusionary zoning, meaning 20% of the units need to be what we call Burnaby Affordable. So 20% below that CMHC median of that area. You came in just under the wire for being able to have a replacement unit. You should just have a right of first refusal for one of those units. So there, there is a queue, yeah. right? So uh, if you, if someone does go into a building after the yeah. rezoning process, they should be notified that they're not eligible under the tenant policy. Okay. That is a requirement. Right. Now we have heard issues of communication from developers to new tenants, and that's something we're working on with okay. them to make sure that you absolutely have to make sure that communication is clear. Yeah. Um, so those people could be eligible, but it depends on where they would be on the right. on the other queue. So was that communicated to you clearly then when you moved in? And they, they... Not at all. Not no, at all. I'm, actually when I moved in, uh, I had no idea what the tenant assistance policy was. I didn't know that the building was going to go down. Like, none of that was communicated to me. Yeah, and, and again, that's something we're working with staff on. My, in talking to staff is they are in communication with developers okay. to make sure that that is happening. And, and since, since uh, your case has happened, we know that's been strengthened. And so hopefully that doesn't happen again for, for tenants who move in after the, the deadline and aren't right. notified. Because that's, you know, a situation like yours, Jess, is just, that's, I, I really feel for you. Because had you known that, you, it might have changed some things, right? If there's a development permit already in place for the property, the manager of that building is under no obligation to tell me as a new renter that this building is going to come down, that there's a development permit in place. No, they are. And they, they you, are. you should be getting a notice okay. saying that you are not eligible for the gotcha. and this is and this building is scheduled to come down okay. so and it's about us so making sure that that's happening right. right so making sure we're following up uh, and and uh, ensuring that that communication is given this one can't be long for this earth well again and that's why i think what one of the province initiatives to buy um to buy uh old rentals and preserve them is a good initiative because the most affordable units in our neighborhoods are old rental stock. And so preserving that is the best way to keep affordability. Right. Um, you know, the, la the last resort is 
when these buildings become at end of life and then and they have to come down. What's the impact of the province telling you as a municipality that you need to allow six units on a residential lot? I, I think the, the problem with the provincial legislation is it goes to the supply argument only to fix the housing affordability crisis, where Burnaby was on the path to, to build uh, many new units to densify all over Burnaby. I mean, just look around. Yeah. Uh, the four town centers and that uh, extending out. And we had that carefully planned with consultation with the community, but also looking at our existing infrastructure to see where we could handle more density and where we couldn't. Mm -hmm. So this one size fits all, it, it really doesn't help us here in Burnaby. And it also doesn't deal with the affordability crisis. Now, Jess, you, you began by saying you were part of something called the Burnaby Community Assembly. After being in this assembly, I feel closer to the community, the residents of Burnaby, than I've ever been before. How do we build a sense of community? Actually, that's a really good, I mean, I'm, I'm, I joke, but that's a really good question because, you know, I mean, I've lived in high-rises before and, you know, you don't look at each other in the elevator. You just kind of look away and then you don't really meet any, any of your neighbors. I, I think if, when we are building these high-rises, we have to make sure uh, there is enough public space for people to come together. Um, whether that, you know, whether that's in the actual development or it will be in the privacy, but in the public space, we gotta make sure the amenities are there. So there's ample green space, so people might not be coming together in their building, but they're coming together when they're walking their dog in the, in the neighborhood dog park, or they're taking their kids to the park. Uh, so if we don't provide those amenities, that community won't be there. But, and so that makes it especially more, more important than when we're densifying buildings, high rises, that we're prioritizing this public space um, where people can come together. What is being done? Like, is there anything in the works for, because um, for example, for me, it's been almost six years now, it's been five and a half years, like my building's gonna go down. The rezoning's already underway. And so I'm kind of wondering, is there anything that would be able to help me and my neighbors? Now, again, if, if you don't fall into the tap and then and you're not in a different uh, BC housing queue. It is we are in a tricky spot because, and that's where the communication comes back, right? So if you're if a tenant is going into a older building knowing it's coming down, they're going with that understanding that this might just be my housing for three to five years and I have no protection. Uh, in your case, you didn't know that, so that's where that communication piece is key. In terms of making sure that people who come after that, because there has to be a deadline, right? And when and so. People come after that deadline. We don't really have control. Like it's hard. It's hard to uh, jump them ahead of other people as well. So what? Uh, what contributed to the deadline being the date of the uh, submission of the application? Well, so it's, it, we had to set the deadline somewhere, and that's where where staff recommended. Um, and that's so. You know, I think one one concern I heard was if there was no deadline, or let's, uh, you know, uh, developers might not rent it out even, it might not be worth it for them to rent it out once they get approval. Because for them, they don't want to add another person there responsible for relocating. Mm. So it, it's, it's a really tricky situation, because um, I get what you're saying. It takes so long from the time of you know the rezoning application to the new building being ready mm. that you would hope that people who came in after were protected as well. But then again, the counter to that is that well, if I'm a developer who owns that building and th that unit moves out after the rezoning application, I might not just rent it out as a, as a builder. How did it come to this in this, in the lower mainland? Like, how did the cost of housing get so far out of whack of what people actually earn and can afford for housing? I, again, I think, you know, it started in the early 90s when the federal government said, we're not going to fund housing anymore. Um, you know, I grew up in a co-op actually not far from here mm -hmm. uh, that the, all these co-ops were built uh, in the 70s, 80s. Th they stopped in the early 90s. And so you had 30 years basically of no yeah. housing uh, being built, no non-market housing, and left to the market to figure out and to solve. And this is where we are. Yeah. We really have to change our mindset because we've developed this mindset of housing as this commodity or investment rather than just somewhere for people like Jess to live. Uh, a human right, right? And that's, that's 
as soon as that mindset is changed back, is the only way we're going to get to a long-term solution to this affordability crisis.